As some of you may know, I have been gone for a couple of weeks, and while I was gone, I didn't have a whole lot of internet service to work with or in general time to get any gains. What I was able to do was occasionally get on my laggy mobile life here, and I bought some ores from Blast Furnace because it was really safe if I disconnected. I needed a lot of ores in the long run, and I was going to do a little bit of fletching. I mean, I did get some fletching in, but not enough to really care that much about. The big thing was I got to about 25k in both coal and iron ore, which would be, you guessed it, 25,000 steel bars. I don't plan on the next step of this process being making all of those steel bars, but that is a lot of ore to work with. One defense coming in hot of course feels good man I happen to just be very close while using a whip so I'll take that oh look how close I am to 108 combat damn I'll take it though come on man oh god that could get me 28 holy shit no way that didn't kill me no way that didn't kill me come on Jad KC 360 minutes 55 seconds for the new personal best. Apparently, no pet yet. Hold on a second. We have another chance at the pet, though. Please, please, man, come on. Don't, don't, don't give me the message you give me every other time. You know what I want. All right. Ran out of inventory space before I could actually get my level. What is this? We're about to grab 78 farming. Which, um, I don't think there's anything special unlocked. We're very close to the farming guild coming out, which I'm gonna need 85 farming for, but there's... I don't know. Farming gains are nice, I just don't really have a specific farming goal right now. Let's get an update on how the Nightmare Zone life has been going. I have been working on strength for a while now, as you have known, because I th throw a clip in there every once in a while, but here comes 94 strength. And in fact, I might as well move on to the next clip where I get 95 strength, and I'm gonna be moving on to some attack XP now. I got a decent amount of AFK Nightmare Zone in. Clearly Nightmare Zone is a safe death, so it was easy to even set this up on mobile occasionally, but on mobile it wasn't as great of an idea. There were a lot of disconnections involved, being out of internet range and dealing with uh, bad connection. Doesn't really work so well for Nightmare Zone, so I didn't get quite as many hours as I had hoped on this episode. But I did hit that 95 strength mark that I've been talking about for a little while now. And it'll be kind of nice to move on to attack. It'll be some quicker combat levels, quicker total levels, and overall some nice gains. Now that I've actually been fighting some things that require a decent melee level, like the Grotesque Guardians, it'd be kind of nice to get that attack level up too. But this is likely the last Nightmare Zone update of this episode. I just did a seaweed run and I actually got my first Hespori seed on the account. Uh, the farming guild did come out very recently. I plan on doing, I don't know, a little bit of a vid on it, a little bit. There's a lot in the farming guild that I'd like to talk about more than just this seed, but it's cool to have one. I'm going to go ahead and play my Hespori right away. I do want to fight this boss and hopefully get some of those Amina seeds. There's three different types of seeds for the Amina patch. None of them are actually called the Amina seeds, but whatever those three seeds are, I don't remember the names of them off the top of my head, but I know one of them is really nice though for getting a lot of extra herbs from each one of my patches. So you saw from the Hespori seed clip that I am still trying to do my seaweed runs as often as I can. This means I need some some more seaweed spores. So I've been doing a little bit of underwater agility. Mostly the spores that just spawn on the ground do well for you compared to the ones that I get to buy, but I got 74 agility while I was here. I've been stuck at 73 agility for quite some time. It's time to get rid of the meme and finally make some gains. And also I can buy another, what, 14 seeds with this, so overall I still have like less than 100 seaweed spores. I have a few left in the bank too, but this will get me a lot of seaweed in the long run, and uh, I really need to get my crafting level up. I've been making some slow gains overall in crafting, so I, I gotta make sure I'm getting these runs done, and we'll get some buckets of sand in the future, but for now I'm just making sure I keep on the seaweed grind. It's actually been a while since I've done any questing in the account. Once I got right around Barrow's Gloves, I just kind of... I didn't feel like there was any more questing to be done for quite some time, but I do want to unlock uh, some other herb patches. Now that I got the herb patch at the farming guild, I'm going to make my way to doing some uh, Myron's Big Adventure. First, I got Edgar's Ruse done, though, for the nice Trollheim teleport, and I think I have, I have to do the feud and then my Arm's Big Adventure. Alright, this will be the feud completed. Uh, then I have my Arm's Big Adventure, and I think... 
I think I'm just going to be unlocking this patch for now. I have a couple other quests I have to do to finish up making friends with my arm, which would be my eighth patch after this one that I'm unlocking. And then, um, oh, the Mauritania Elite Diaries, which I need 84 crafting, I think. So 79 with a boost. Maybe it was 89 crafting, 84 with a boost. Either way, I need higher crafting levels for it, so I'm not going to be getting that patch for a little while. But I have one more quest, and I can at least unlock this one disease-free patch. And this is going to be the end of My Arm's Big Adventure. So this patch up on top of Trollheim is disease free, which is kind of nice. I haven't really lost that many herbs to disease. My farming level is doing alright. And I've been using Ultra Compost, so they don't die very often. But this makes for seven patches that I can now work with, including the farming guild that came out recently. Uh, I will do a, a full run with seven patches uh, at the end of this video to get an idea of, I don't know, what it looks like with how many herbs I can get. If I'm doing 10 to 12 herbs per patch, that's insane, but it, it's not always 10 herbs per patch that I average. It's a minimum of six with Ultra Compost, though, so if none of them die, that's 42 herbs in every run. Overall, I'm getting a lot more herbs than I was before, and I need herb lore XP. Speaking of herbs, let's go ahead and take from the miscellaneous coffers and see what my, see what my people have done for me lately. Good amount of coal and uh, and gems as always, but the herbs are very nice. Herbs are a little more important than coal right now. In fact, I'm finally going to take some of my effort out of mining and put it into hardwood for construction instead. The mining has been really nice to get a lot of coal from it. As you can see, as I showed you at the beginning of the episode, I use a lot of coal. I've had a few runs on the series where I've gone through a pretty large chunk of it, and this has helped a lot, but I'm willing to either buy more coal from Ordan or be heading back to Motherload Mine when I get a chance. I'm going to switch it over to hardwood, I think. Think, yeah, I'm probably gonna do both mahogany antiques because then you also get a chance at some bird's nests. You won't get very many, but I'll do both mahogany antique planks. I don't know exactly which option is most efficient for construction XP, and I could do a little more research into that. But in all reality, just getting some extra hardwood that I could eventually use plank make on for the magic XP, then use the planks for construction XP. I really don't have any problem with it. I'm gonna end up chopping some more oak logs for those planks probably in the near future because I want construction levels kind of soon, but. I think this is a good start for now, uh, to get some extra hardwood. It'll be a bit before I come back and check the uh, the coffers, though. I try to put a decent amount of time between grabbing supplies, so it always looks like there's a lot of supplies in there, you know? Let's get back to those steel bars that I was talking about before. As you can see, I'm a little more than halfway through my iron ore right now. In fact, I'm on the verge of getting a smithing level. Once I get these 25k steel bars, they are all going to eventually be cannonballs. I don't plan on spending the 50 hours, though, it's just straight to, uh, to make all those cannonballs. I will be using them over time though. I've spent a decent amount of time, like every time I run out of cannonballs, going back through the buying iron ore and this blast furnace life and whatnot. So now at least I have a large supply to work with for a while. As I just missed though, it was 87 smithing coming in hot. Any gains are nice to have. In fact, I believe with these steel bars and then a few of the cannonballs, I'll get up to 88 smithing, but this will be the last little smithing blurb of this episode. You guys, you get the Blast Furnace and how it works at this point. I do so much of it. Seriously, this is probably, this might be the content I have the most hours in on RuneScape overall is the Blast Furnace. It's ridiculous. So here is a full herb run that I did with all seven patches. This was just the first herb run I did that all seven patches were, were planted, not necessarily like the best one I've gotten yet, just to get an idea of how many herbs I'm getting. It is going to be like 60 to 70 herbs, I imagine, the majority of these trips. And honestly, it's really not bad if I am doing a, a few herb runs a day. I just don't always get all my herb runs in, that's for sure. And I am starting to run a little bit lower on some herb seeds, but in all reality, I've got plenty to work with. I do a lot of Slayer, and I don't mind sitting down at Master Farmers to get more seeds. Herb runs are clearly very important because I still need to work on my herb lore level pretty heavily, but... Other than unlocking the other two patches, I don't think I'll have very many uh, herb highlight clips anymore. I mean, you get it. I'm doing my herb runs as much as I can. I do want to upgrade my Arty Cloak to an Arty Cloak 3 and my Explorer's Ring to the Explorer's Ring 3 so that I have unlimited teleports and don't have to switch over to Arty and Falador teleports during, during the day. But overall, doing fine on herb runs. Here's a final look at what I had at the end of the run. Honestly, 60 herbs from one run is pretty nice if I get that every time. Uh, even if I'm only doing like the three runs per day that I get out of those um, Arty Cloak and Lumby Rings, that's not bad. That's a lot of herbs that I can work with, and at least I'm making some progress on that front. I'm going to wrap up the episode here, though, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. It was a little bit of scattered progress today. Uh, being gone for a couple of weeks, I didn't really get to sit down and camp a certain type of content like I normally would, but still made some solid progress, so I appreciate you all tuning in, and I will see you next time.